Sometimes you may have a need to rescue a system that becomes unbootable for some reason. Um, we all do it. We make mistakes. Uh, we uh, do an install and maybe it bombs in the middle of the install at a critical point and comes up and it's not able to boot on its own. And uh, so I'm going to demonstrate uh, uh, some steps that you can take to bring up a Linux system and uh, get it working again if you find yourself in that situation. So we have our Debian Linux uh, system here. And just for the sake of example, we'll um, say you did something that's probably not real smart to do, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. We'll remove the running kernel. So we'll apt remove Linux image dash, and we'll use the backticks uname dash r. And um, yeah, the system happily prompts us to remove the running kernel. Go ahead and accept the default. And um, it's warning us that this is highly recommended to abort this, but we will not take the recommendation. We'll go ahead and remove the running kernel. And there we have it. Now we'll go ahead and reboot and see what happens. back up. And now instead of our nice grub screen and booting back to a command prompt, we just have a grub rescue like this. Um, help really isn't helpful. There's really nothing we can do at this point because I know we have really removed our running kernel. There's no kernel on the hard drive and we're basically stuck. So at this point we are going to insert a CD, our Debian net install CD that we use to install this, and we're going to actually um, reboot the machine. And now we're booted to the net install disk. I'll go to our advanced options. And in the advanced options, we have a rescue mode. Okay. So now we boot to rescue mode, and we'll go ahead and accept the different uh, defaults here. Okay, and uh, we will probably want to go ahead and configure the network. Okay, it's not critical in this case that we have the correct host name and domain name. Uh, some operations possibly so, but not, not here. Go ahead and take the defaults. Okay, so now it's giving us lots of options here. Um, the installer will be nice enough to go ahead and set up our RAID devices that we need. Um, We'll go ahead and do that. We could do that manually, um, but we'll go ahead and let this um, automatically scan for the RAID devices. Now we have RAID devices and we have VG1 root. So we can go ahead and uh, run a shell in our root environment. <coughs> Continue. And there we are. And so now we can just do apt install Linux dash image. Well, we probably need to uh, search for the kernel. Image dash four point nine point zero oh point. Dash six 
dash AMD sixty four. Notice that we are running inside our root environment. So once we install this, uh, the system should be bootable again. OK, so there we have it. We've installed the kernel. And in theory, we should just be able to uh, exit out of here and reboot and boot it back up. Uh, of course, uh, that this is an example of where I knew exactly what I did wrong and so I was able to go directly back and fix it. Now there's uh, a lot of other use cases for this. You might have to do some troubleshooting. You might have a uh, file system that's corrupted. So you could uh, use uh, fsck.ext4 and uh, choose the, uh, <coughs> the file system. You might have a uh, RAID, RAID array that has uh, become degraded or otherwise uh, gotten into a mode that it, it can't uh, access during boot. So just booting up and uh, assembling the array. Now sometimes you might uh, not be able to jump directly into the root from the installer. Uh, so let me go back and uh, give you an idea what you can do. Now there may be some instances where uh, for whatever reason you're not able to uh, find the root file system or the installer is is not able to uh, assemble the root and get you an, a shell directly inside that root file system. In which case, you can still use uh, the rescue mode, but you may have to do a few things manually. So we'll go ahead and assume that's the case here. Don't use a root file system, and we have the option to execute a shell in the installer environment. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that here. Now, if I just simply type mount, uh, you can see there is nothing really that's mounted besides the, uh, the installer environment. So I can simply type fdisk, uh, fdisk-l, and it will list out the uh, disks on my system. Here we can see SDA and SDB. Um, uh, in this case, I know there's actually a RAID uh, array. Um, but there's nothing in proc MD stat, so we would need to assemble that. So MD ADM dash dash assemble dash dash scan. Uh, that should go ahead and start my RAID arrays. Okay, so if I look at my MD stat there, I can see the RAID arrays. And let's see if we also have our volume groups. If I do G VG display. And sure enough, there's my volume group, and it's running. If I do LDS, there are my logical volumes. Uh, they're there. So now I have the opportunity, if I need to do something like a file system check on the root file system. Now, it's not mounted, so I can do fsck.ext4 dev mapper uh, vg1-root. Okay, at this point we can see the uh, logical volumes. We can use um, LV display to show the status of the logical volumes because at this point they're not actually active. Uh, VG1 slash uh, root. There you can see LV status not available. Uh, we can use LV change dash A Y VG1 slash root, and now we do see that it is available. Now we can use something like uh, fsck on dev mapper pg1-root to do a file system check. And of course that scans and it is clean. Now once we're happy with that, we could uh, create a mount point uh, we could do slash mnt slash system, make a mount point there, and then we can mount dev mapper pg1 root on mnt system, for example. <coughs> Alright, now we can use chroot to actually enter that system, but before we do, 
uh, in order to be actually useful, we'll probably need to mount several other file systems into that new root file system. So, in order to mount those new those other file systems, we we'll use mount dash o bind, and we'll mount first of all slash dev, and then slash mnt slash system slash dev. Okay, we'll do the same thing for slash. Oh yeah, my scroll back doesn't work. Uh, mount dash o bind slash proc slash mnt slash system slash proc and then mount dash o bind slash sys into slash mnt slash system slash sys. Okay, now that we've got those three file systems, uh, virtual file systems mounted inside there, uh, we can do basically anything we want inside that. <coughs> we'll simply chroot slash mnt slash system and there we are. Now I can apt update or any other processes and we're working on the the main system on this computer even though we're only in here uh, through the installer environment. So this is basically the same thing that we did earlier but we did it step by step from the command line uh, rather than letting the installer set this up. And sometimes you'll need to do this uh, depending on uh, how the system is broken. <coughs> Just an example of some other things we can do in here. Notice we didn't have to s put in a root password even though there is a password on the system. So this is a good way also if you need to reset a password. Um, passwd. Of course I'm in as root so enter the new password. And there we have it. Once we're done in here, we can simply exit, and uh, we could unmount the file systems at this point. Uh, there's no need to. If we uh, reboot the system from here, they will be unmounted cleanly. <coughs> and we will also need to actually remove our um, CD, otherwise we'll keep rebooting to the CD. And now we can boot back up. So there you have it. A crash course in rescuing a Linux system using the uh, Debian rescue disk. The, net, net in, the rescue environment on the Debian net install disk. Beautiful. We're at a login prompt. Login. And we're using our new uh, root password. And sure enough, there it is. Uh, we even have the uh, command history left. <laughs> so, there you have it.